time on the Back Straight Boys, we're going to be talking with Katrina Johnson Thompson again. Well, I'm not. These two are. And we're going to be talking about her training and her junior career. Enjoy. When you started out in athletics, what, what, what age were you when you started competing? I, when I started competing, it was, it was funny, you know, like year, when you go into the, the big bit of the primary school, so yeah. it's like year one, year two, and then when you go into year three, we was able to compete for our school. Right. So that was just literally at the end of each year, we used to do the Catholic schools championships, and I was the tallest you go to the jump, <laughs> and the teacher did it that way. I did high jump every year up until year six. In year six, that's when I broke the record for um, the Catholic schools. And I actually put this on the high jump bar the other day, and I was like, did I do this when I was getting this one, the one meter 32 scissor kick? <laughs> uh, in year six. <laughs> I was like, no, I was How like, old were you in year six? Is it 11? Okay. 11? Yeah. I can't do that now. Um, <laughs> there's a challenge to you through my personal training, and sometimes when I got bored, I'd say, like, well, let's just do a bit of high jump just to, like, turn it off. Just because, like, it's just, they're just trying to make us do like squat thrusts and yeah. <laughs> burpees and things. Well, this is still my jump. It was just an excuse to get out of doing it. Yeah. But um, I, I think I did 125. <laughs> <laughs> I was really good. Everything was really good until I actually got to the jumping. Scissor so. or the fuck? Uh, oh, no, an actual proper. Okay. You couldn't call it. No, no, no. It was more like a thrust. It was like a He looks like Barshim in the run up, and then it's just like drop sideways. <laughs> Um, so then you, yeah, did you join a club? Yeah, so year six I broke the, the record and um, my mum had me doing all these different, different like I used to do dancing and football and stuff and I used to hate dancing, I used to be a bit of a tomboy and as soon as I did that I found out that my friend was doing it as well and she phoned up and sort of bragging saying oh, I've, I've joined the Liverpool Harriers <laughs> and I put the phone down and I was like mum I'm going to go and join the Harriers like, and then I dragged her where she was dragging me to dance lessons and stuff and I just literally fell into it. I did high jump every Tuesday or an hour a week and then because the high jump lesson finished at five, got to do running afterwards. And the long jump woman wanted me, so she was like, come to my long jump, so I did high jump and the long jump. And then eventually I had on hurdles, then in the Young Athletes League, so I was running from event to event. So I'd like, you're, you're one of those people who like wins for the club, aren't you? Like, <laughs> doing this many. So I'd like, put my high jump run up down, run and do a hurdle chase, come back to the high jump, do long jump, and then a relay at the end. And I was just like, I was like really young, and I was like, Mom, I'm exhausted. And then she found out at this competition where you go from event to event together, and I did it and loved it and just came back the next year. And so were you always going to be a multi eventer? Yeah. But I was high on a hydrogen But it's I think it's good training, isn't it? To be motivated, it's good yeah, training for young athletes. Definitely, definitely. Now, on a national level as a junior, you won loads of things, you were like number one. But at the international championships, you didn't do so well at the European juniors and the world juniors. Was there a reason for that or was it just luck? Were you um, injured? I, the World Juniors is the very first one I did. I won that one in 2009 and then literally my knee has been an issue right, right. ever since then. <laughs> so World Juniors in 2009 did that. It was like amazing. It was the first ever international competition. And then 2010 I didn't go to Canada. I think it was the World Juniors that year because of my knee. 2011 I didn't really rehab my knee that well. Um, they just basically told me to rest. There wasn't anything done. Just rest and rehab. That year it was still a problem. And then at the end of 2011, I had these um, patella injections, um, PRP it's called, in my knee to get rid of tendinopathy. And that worked in 2012. Well, I was going to say, because there was a massive breakthrough from you in 2012. 2011, I was literally an injured young athlete trying to just you know, get it back from the world youths. And in 2011, I was just like, right, let's sort this thing out. And then I did that in 2012. That's when my PB went from like 5'7 to 6'2. Yeah, so that's what happens during my... And do you think in some ways not achieving massively as a junior almost helps you in a senior career? Definitely, I think achievement I did when I was really young, yeah. but then a junior I had the flavour for it, so I didn't just quit. It was yeah. like, okay, that's what I can do. Like, let's not just quit. And I think, yeah, going through it, I was fighting, fighting a battle, and I, I definitely got through it. Because when you've been an amazing junior, it's sometimes tough when you just move into well, the senior. Well, it's the expectation, isn't it? You yeah. immediately think you're going to just continue on. Oh. And you actually have quite seamlessly continued on from um, junior to senior. Um, and I've seen this like little graph, it's got like 2012, 13, 14, and 11, and it goes up, and then 2000. <laughs> 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 yeah, it, is, it has been, uh, been fortunate in that respect that I've managed to add on a good 300 points each year. Yeah. 
Who were your inspirations growing up, or sporting inspirations? Uh, I think it's a show before, but I wasn't really involved in athletics. Like, the first Olympics I watched properly was 2008. So, for me, it was like football, mm -hmm. and it was like Steve Miller and Jim Callender. That's what <laughs> it was like for me. It was, yeah, I was more down that route, but uh, I do go back now, and I do like Key Calibre. <laughs> my coach is like a stat man, and also one of my main sponsors, Barry. Back in the day, I was a big stat man, and they give me like these multi event books and stat books and stuff. So, yeah, it's I do geek out and look back on my club. And I wish I would have been <laughs> watching yeah. athletics when she was around, but I love watching videos of her and uh, just get me around. Well, talking so, of so, yeah, so just, just really, uh, Britain's got a fantastic um, reputation yeah. for the, the heptathlon, going all the way back to Mary Mann, Mary Peters, Mary Judy Peters, Simpson. Um, was actually from where I grew up. Right. What was Mary Mann? No, Mary Peters. Um, but the, 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 obviously Denise was a huge yeah. inspiration to all the athletes. Um, Kelly, then to Jess, to um, yourself and Morgan, yeah. um, younger. Why do you think the UK has such a great... Um, I think it's the history. I think it is actually the history. One inspires the other. Yeah, definitely. And I think, yeah, it's one inspires the other. My coach, he goes, he's got some young athletes as well. He goes to national champs and he's saying that the, you know, the pool is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And if you have more athletes to choose from, you're bound to get a talent to run a lot. And I think that's just what happens. Yeah. Talking of your coach, Mike Harms, how long have you been, how long has he been your coach? Since 2008. Right, so all your senior career, not your junior yeah. career as well. And how, what's he like as a coach and which events he most helps you with? He has changed me as a person and an athlete, I think. For the better. Was, for the better. <laughs> for the better. <laughs> I think when I was younger, I was one of those people who, who just rocked up and could rely on talent. Uh, whereas he, right, even in training and competitions, it was like, I'll just be able to get over. I don't need to listen to you or whatever. I'll just, you know, I'll just try it harder and it won't happen. I was like one of those athletes, whereas he sort of embedded that just because I turn up for training doesn't mean it's a tick box. You've got to turn up for training and be on your A game. And, you know, he's, he's, he's very good that way and he's so technical and he's a stat man and he's got so many hydrogen products. And, yeah, so I think he's definitely made me that he's done today. And which do you spend more time on? Training for your weaker events or your stronger events? Weaker. Yeah. Yeah. Mainly because I, I pretty much couldn't practice the high jump, <laughs> the long jump because of my name. Right. Um, yeah, so probably. I mean, it must be a difficult balance though, because like, part of you goes, well, I'm going to jump 720 in the long jump, I'm going to concentrate it and I'm going to jump too. <laughs> is it natural for you, the high jump and the long jump? Yeah. It looks pretty natural. Yeah, it is. And, um, you know, the more, I think that's why this operation has been such a, a big decision for me, and I've literally had more high jump up them. Training sessions in this short amount of time that I've been training than I did the last two years already. So like, literally, like, I feel it's gonna make my high jump and a long jump better, and I'll be able to train better and stuff. So that's scary for your yeah, competitors. It's scary. It's just it's <laughs> weird for me to go into a high jump session and not feel knee pain. <laughs> so this is this is this the same knee as you had issues with when you were a junior? Yeah. So I got over tendinopathy and this year. It was actually in Prague, in Prague, the first run around I did in the high jump. Um, I put my foot down and I felt my knee. I was like, ooh, <laughs> that, that hurts. <laughs> and then, like the whole, the whole of Prague was just basically me running around with knee pain. Uh, I remember thinking, I'm not going really to need to even pull out of this high jump. <laughs> I just did it. Fortunately, that ruined my season. So um, it was, it's not pretending, it was bursa was inflamed because of a bone that was a bit more pointy and it was sticking into my bursa so every time I bent it, with that bone uncomfortable. And that's all been sorted out And that's why I pulled out the gutsits right. and give it a lot of rest and then I managed to get back in shape for um, the national champs and then pulled my blood and then managed to get back to Beijing and start the new problem yeah. and, and no fitness or training or competition practice yeah. at all. <laughs> so the knee is completely sore now and I, I went on holiday and came back and the day after I was on an operation table and just like get it sorted. Everything's going to be really I kept all the indoor. Sorted, all good yeah. now. Yeah. No problems at all this winter. No problem. Nothing. No problems. I had a scan and stuff last week and needs. This time on the Back to Red Boys we're going to be talking to KJT. So you'll be able to concentrate on my job and not just training points. Trying to get the back bend, so, 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 so
Like what? Sun crying. <laughs> <laughs> but I suppose my question is, what happened? So means we sit at home, we're yeah, on yeah. Twitter, we're watching the TV, we're kind of shouting and giving advice, we don't know what we're talking about, you know. So what from your perspective, what's actually happened? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um what happened was um there were not people say about the safe jump and a, sh- a safe trip in, but from the moment I marked out my run up to the very last jump, me and my coach took it back about three meters. People think I just kept on saying that. Well, that's so interesting to know. Because we just saw the scene. What should you do? People thought I was just going, no, no, I'm in the right place. We thought you were being stubborn. There is an idea that you, you sometimes hear an athlete say, I wasn't going to do, I wasn't going to say, I was going to pick gold or nothing. So we thought maybe that was the. the, the um, your, in your mind was like, you know, I'm not gonna, I want that gold medal, so I'm gonna go all out. But you say you didn't take it back three meters. So. I took it back three meters from the moment I did my first practice jump to the very third jump where it was three no jumps. And it's a bit of both. I understand when athletes say, I'm going for gold, and you know, this is it all or nothing. It's kind of a bit of that, but at the same time, you can't really. I, I took it back three meters, that's me trying to have a safe jump. Yeah. But I have to do the same running. I don't know, like, I'm all out. It is all or nothing. Like, when you're doing the run up, you've got to make sure that's the third jump you can do, otherwise, it's the swimming to the board and it's like five meters, whatever. So, for me, it's like I took it back, I give myself plenty of room. There's nothing else I could have done. But you weren't alone. I mean, there was board issues across the whole of the jump. Exactly. So there was plenty of actual, um, you know, the people in the main um, long jump competition who did three no jumps as well. Um, that was um, my my own jump. Obviously, they had to have on the first two days, and the long jumps one of the first times that anyone uses right, the, yeah. the long jump board. So for me, seeing the actual long jumpers in male, female, in the, in the qualifier and the final, in the decathlon, that was. That was really <laughs> yeah. not something that was wrong with me, it was yeah. something that was clearly wrong with the wrong way, I hope. But I think it's a bit of me not being able to train as much and I wasn't getting sprinting in. And also, normally the faster you run, the more ground you gobble up, so you're normally short. But this way, this run off for some reason, the faster you ran, the more ground you gobbled up. So you just ended up being over the board. So for me, that was that was a head mess as well. I mean, looking back, is there anything you could have done differently in that long no. jump? Cool. And you're that's that's your final because you know you did what you needed to do. I took it back so much, unless I don't know. Like maybe when you take it back, I took it back three meters. I don't know if you know what happens when you take it back. Like when I started before I started the run, if I just went like that. Yeah. That's like. No, that's no, that's no, that's no, 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 I, I, I took it back, I kept on taking it back, and I had plenty of room, but I don't know. The one thing I took out of you in Beijing is you came in having been injured, still a bit injured, not really having any prep, unprepared, I mean, showing your high jump. That, oh, that, that high jump, that run out, oh my god, <laughs> you reminded me of it, and then I went, oh! <laughs> <laughs> having seen all of that, well, just what I took away was how phenomenally talented you are. Yeah. And ha- having very little prep, having like your long jump, um, obviously the run-up wasn't, having done more practice going into it, maybe you could have handled a bit differently. The high jump, which is your best event, and usually we can see you like clockwork, that, even that run-up was all, all out of kilter. I took away, when you're in shape, and you could have gone gold, potentially, having been in that shape. So what does that tell you about what you potentially can do in Rio and what your limits are? It just shows me that it can be done, yeah. and for me that gives me so much confidence. I know, you know, I didn't have the best prep, and my coach managed to get me in in gold medal shape yeah. for Beijing, and um, which is just credit to him because we had about three weeks. <laughs> we well, we didn't have three weeks, but after the trials, it was about. Normally, when you go into a holding camp, you just refine and little bits and stuff. I was there every day, like just getting the training, in. and you know, he got me into that shape, and it, it can be done. And for me, it just shows me that you know I've, I've got to just have confidence in myself, and if I get to that line in pro shape, no injuries, like that's just my main goal to try and do that for real. And do you take last year as kind of motivation for next year, or do you just kind of blank it out and forget it happened? It took me a long time to not cry about it when someone brings it up. 
So, so <laughs> like, I like, want to say I can just not laugh about it now, but like every single day when I would go back to Beijing, it was like my first day. So the time you say, oh god, that that thing happened in Beijing, whoa, like, and that would set me up for the day, and I'd be so upset. And you know, now I try and wake up, and I still think about it. It's not the second thought I have, but it's like I think that in Beijing. I'm just going to try and rectify this now, and you know I do put it into training, and it's so easy to motivate myself now. Like, like a hill session or like running session, like all I need to do is think about that. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> did you learn a lot of lessons? I mean, because that's when you learn the lessons when you don't do something well, things go wrong. So did you learn a lot of lessons? In um, yeah, yeah, I did. I'm, I'm more hardened to the world, and more hardened to it's not always going to just work out the way. You think it is like I think I was more like I'm still ha a happy person, but I was more like smiles and like you know happy to just be doing athletics and stuff. But now it's just like you know what I don't know. I just I feel like I'm a changed person. If that makes sense. Yeah. No. That's that's yeah. part of. Yeah, it's all very well being the most talented or the, the hardest working, but sometimes it's mental as well, and it's experience. And I think Jess showed a lot of that in, yeah, in Beijing. She wasn't in the best yeah. shape necessarily, but she had so much experience, yeah. and she didn't put a foot wrong. Yeah, and that's, that's what you need to do. You need to on it, seven events, and just need to plant through each event, doing the best you can do, <laughs> no disasters, you know, and that's, that's what she'll do. That's what she did, and that's what she will do. That's that one in. And Which must also be motivation for you because if you lose to Jess, you're not just a second in the world, you're actually second in your own country. <laughs> and then the vice versa. Vice versa, yeah, absolutely. So you must have that in the back of your mind. Um, for me, I, you know, I'm just thinking about Golden Rio. I don't care about it. God, I'm second in the group, and I just, I just want the goal. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think that we look back, we always look back at the 80s and like Seb Curran and Steve Rivera and Steve Crown, they all pushed each other to be better. And it feels like we've got a little bit of that going on in the heptathlon yeah. at the moment. So to have the, really the best two in the world from Britain is brilliant. Yeah. Um, talking of Rio, um, when you lined up in London, was it in the back of your head that in four years' time I could actually be going in as one of the favourites? No, I remember that at the time, in 2012, I was, you know, a junior athlete. Um, I was funded for Rio, and it was like an audience for so I was like, this is. This is just, the, I'm here for the experience, you know, blah, blah, blah. Rio is my, my main aim. And then I went away from it, I came 15, and I was like, God, I've got a lot of work to do if I need to win this in four years. I'm coming away from it. And then in the interviews, I was like, oh, yeah, but in Rio, you know, I'm still only 23, like, 2020, <laughs> that's Jess's age, so 2020, Tokyo is going to be my time. And I've just managed to gradually, you know, improve. And you know that's just what I need to do. I'm just so happy that I'm fortunate enough to be in this position where I am going for gold, and like this is just my dream. And hopefully, it's just gonna. Happen. And you are still very young for her athletes. You know, <laughs> going for gold at 22, and Carolyn Cliff was, was young, but mostly it's a big thing you get. But as, as you as you grow old and you get um, more experience in different events, and it's a lot to learn, isn't it? Seven events. Yeah, it's it's a lot to learn. You don't come into form like throw them all, get better and better with age and strength and you know like the maturity and you know like you said about Jess and stuff with experience so yeah I will I will um, obviously be going to 2021 to win there as well but if I want to you know be a double and jump this is this is it for me this year so so is that double in Rio do you mean or double in so <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, I did have half one and then have top one again in 2020 yeah. will you be doing the long jump in Rio as well I can't rule it out. It's something that, you know. Does it work timetable wise? I've yeah, not checked. Yeah. I think the high jump works better. Ah. Um, the high jump's on like the, the um, third to last day, then a rest, and the last day. There's a long jump, I think it's one less rest day than I had in Beijing. And to be honest, if you can jump two metres, which I've no doubt you can, then you're in a round. You could even win a goal with that in, in, in Rio. It's not. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, but she can jump 720 then. Well, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's something that I don't want to rule out, you know, I think you just want to take your chances when you're in the you know, what's going to happen in four years, so... But heptathlon is the priority. Yeah, definitely. And the Olympics, I mean, from, we watch the Olympics, World Championships, European, European indoors, we'll watch absolutely anything, but 
from being there, is there a big difference between like an Olympics and a world championship? Did it feel different to you? For me, the only Olympi Olympics I've experienced is London. Yeah, which was insane. Nothing's going to be ever again, so I don't know. I'll let, you, I'll let you know next year after I've experienced Rio and compare that to Beijing, maybe. But for me, London was like nothing else. And competing on home soil at such a big championship, that must make a big difference to well, everything. I mean, is it, does it make it easier or harder? I have a bit of both. I've done the anniversary games now for a couple of years, and it is kind of the same vibes. Um, it is really daunting when you step onto the, the anniversary games and long jump, but like the crowd, just the noise, it like sends shivers down the spine. And it isn't daunting because I think that I'm one of those athletes that react to, you know, those. To think what was in big pressure situation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that pressure situation, but yeah, um, yeah, I do think I, apart from Beijing, every major championship I've been in, I've all the PB and done well. So, but individually in, in Beijing, you did anyway, despite the yeah. you PB in the hurdles, you PB in the shot. Yeah, it, would have, it probably would have been a PB overall as well. Mm. I would have got you know the six eighty, and um, I would have done a better job for sure yeah. because I literally found out like a minute before my first throw um, and you know the 800 I love, I love that one out to the 800 so I think it might have been PB because it was in the 6-6 so it might have just clipped it so I think and obviously the situation I was in so yeah. I think yeah, I had to like to perform big and big competitions. Now whilst the, um, whilst the winning score in Beijing wasn't particularly high it was actually a really good, good year in depth for the heptathletes last year. Lots of young people coming through and scoring in those 6-3, 6-4s that we haven't sort of seen for a while. Um, what do you think you're going to need to score to medal or let's just say get gold in, in Beijing? I said this about Beijing. Beijing. I said about Beijing, I remember saying oh, I don't know, it's going to be like 6-8, 6-9. But like, you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. But because it's Olympic here, I'm going to say 6-8, 6, eight, six nine. And you can do that? Hopefully, my PBs. <laughs> PBs I can do you get that calculator out and put it in the app? It's like on my home page. <laughs> <laughs> Cheshire County one. That's the one I've got. It's called a score calculator. Okay. Because Cheshire, Cheshire County Athletics, they have the one that I use all the time. And I put that. Like, Oh, I need to get that. Okay. Yeah, you just know oh, saw one of, one of my um, things. One of your dirty pictures. <laughs> 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 she's, got, she's got one like what she's going to aim for. Um, um, one question that lots of people asked was on the first jump in the heptathlon in Rio, in the long jump, do you go for it or do you go for a safety jump? Define safety <laughs> jump. <laughs> for you, it's like 650, yeah. yeah. Rather yeah, than like 70 metres. How, how am I going to go for 650? Like, you don't know. You can't like, go for a safety jump. Got you, okay. Like, I think what people mean is. is like, are you going to just make, yeah. try and be like with one centimetre to spare on the board? Or are you just going to not? Like, you know, when hurdlers try and qualify, mm. yeah, yeah, they can't really go for goes, a slow yeah. race in the long jump. I think it's the same because your run up is your speed. Run. So I don't know how you go for a safety jump, but I will take it back. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I will get on the board and then I'll go, let's go back, three shoes, and let's do it for the first yeah. jump. But a safety jump, I just... It's, okay. it's, just it's so jump. interesting because we sit there, we watch it, as you know, a lot of athletics have done for decades. And yet we still say stupid things like that. Like, <laughs> and it yeah. takes take someone who's there to say, no, that's not possible. So that's really interesting for all it's, of us. And yeah, maybe so say the only thing I could define a safety jump as is getting on the board and then moving it back and then just blatantly missing the board. Yeah, just to get one in. Yeah. So you've got some points on the well, board. Well, I did try and do that. So you try it, yeah. <laughs>